Thanks for joining us in this special episode of Furuno Connections. In the last four episodes, we covered a lot of information in the Char Potter shootout. We talked about dropping waypoints and creating routes. We even did a speed test on the systems and talked about weather as well. In this episode, we get to talk to the captains and the crew about their impressions on TZ Touch 3 versus the competitors in the Char Potter area. We're also going to review some of the features that were covered in the past episodes that you may have missed. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Well, we finished the char potter day, and it was quite an experience to get out there and see. Let's go to Jack. Jack, what was one of your favorite things that we covered today with the uh, the char potter and, and TCT3? I mean, man, now, now where do I start? You know, <laughs> Furuno, you know, the capabilities of that unit, I was just showing some of the guys what I learned. I mean, it's amazing. You know, the, the new uh, catch that you have is a quick save. Your catch comes up. You can identify the fish that you catch in that area and save them by category. We just hooked up on a fish and I'm gonna save this spot. I hit the events, that's gonna save the spot right where I'm at. Now I can hit this hook for new. I can click on the species that I wanna label it as. Say we just caught a grouper. I'm gonna hit grouper, grouper comes up. We can hit the length that it is say it's 30 inches it weighed 25 pounds now it just saved that spot right there where I'm at and it'll be a grouper icon so next time I know looking if I want a grouper that's where I'm gonna go you can also do is turn off your normal points and only your catches will come up. So, you, you know, I, I'm gonna treat that as like, that's my hot spot, okay? So those are the spots that are gonna be my go-to spots, and I don't have to see all the other, you know, waypoints on there, it kind of becomes a blur, but, you know, we got 3,000 waypoints. So if we can pick out our key, you know, 50 or 100 spots or species of fish that we catch, you know, that's key for me. But, you know, one thing that impresses me is, I, once again, I got 3,000 spots. Keeping them safe, that is number one. The pin code, I know those other boats aren't gonna have that. I've been asking for years, like, man, why doesn't somebody come out with that? I've seen it online, people complaining about it. And Furuno, home run, you guys did your homework, you came through. We go into the home menu, click on settings, and then click on general. You'll see password lock is off right now. All we have to do is turn it on and enter our code. Be sure it basically comes up with a uh, with a warning saying, "Hey, if you forget your passcode lock, the data could be gone." But the cool thing about TZ Touch Three is we have that new cloud that, that new cloud feature. So if you save your data to the cloud, even if you lose or forget your password or some catastrophic happens, all your data is still safe in the cloud. You can reload it right into the machine. So with that being said, if someone were to God forbid steal the unit or try to enter it, there's no way they're gonna get my personal information and all the spots I've worked so hard for. That's right, your data's safe. That's awesome. Aren't you guys the first ones to come out with this? Yeah, I've been told, yeah, I don't think anybody else has it. We're the first, TZ Touch 3 is the first product to actually have the pin code lock feature to save your data. And uh, a lot of people are really excited about it. I know down here in the Keys or anywhere you go, fishermen, their points, that's their livelihood, a lot of them. And they, 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 they value that data. It's super important. And we're, we can actually save it for them now. We don't have, you don't have to worry about it. You can have peace of mind when you leave the boat that nobody's going to be able to jump on the boat and steal your points. I mean, you guys are putting safety in our units. No one's going to come in and steal our numbers. If they steal the unit, they still can't get the numbers. And you know what it's going to prevent is boat thefts. What happens when do they steal them? At night. If they can't navigate, guess what? They may run into something and yeah, your boat may be damaged, but that's going to deter boat theft. What you guys have done at Furuno is 100% game changing and I'm happy to be running Furuno on all my boats. That's great. Thanks, Jack. Well, Eric, how about you though? What, what uh, do you want to bring up? You know, you I'll, I'll just, you know, with the, with the TZ Touch UI, 
and and just talking about catch alone when we go in to the points menu and the catch menu and being able to sort by species and find the nearest other catch spots that's going to be so valuable these guys they're out there fishing one spot goes dead they can go to another spot just hit that catch feature go in and search and you know search by name search even by by distance Search by the length of the fish they're catching in those spots. It's really pretty cool and sort them. So I, I just think it's a, the catch feature and the speed and just the improvements in the UI are just pretty invaluable. I'm just really happy to be on the water with our units and being able to freaking see those new features and being, I was really just, I was happy to see you happy, you know what I mean? Yeah. As a fisherman, being going just wow, wow, wow. Whether it be the free weather downloads every day, you know, the, uh, the, just the overall user interface ease, the way you can just drop a position or somebody's calling in with numbers, a quick edge swipe and boom, you're punching in those numbers and you're going there. I was just, I was just happy that you were pretty, I could feel your excitement Absolutely. and I was totally happy to, to watch you go, holy crap, this is really cool. So well, and one awesome. thing I like to add, Eric, is you know, that unit is lightning fast. Mm -hmm. I was doing that you know, infinity, infinity figure, yeah. oh my God, that thing was just, right, it never right. left my finger. You take it off, stops, put it back on. I mean, that thing was keeping up with me, lightning fast, definitely for Uno, home run. So with TZ Touch 3, we've got a quad core processor and plenty of memory to have enough speed to do whatever you want to do. The machine will always keep up with you. There's no lag. We conducted the speed test in all four systems, and as you can see, TZ Touch 3 and System C kept up with the figure 8 motions. System A kept up for a while, then started to lag and finally froze. System B lagged behind the figure 8 motion the entire time. Well, let's, uh, Captain Mike, you were on System A. So comparing System A to TZ T3, what's, uh, what's your impression? Um, I think just the, the fact of the the ease of it, you know, to, to run through these machines and find everything you need. And, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to knock Unit A. It, it did good, but it definitely lacked in a lot of areas that, that the tzt 3s just overcome. Now, have you ever hit that delete button when you have the oh crap factor? Let me tell you what, you can undo it several times so you can make a lot of mistakes. Yeah and the Fruno TZT3 will back you up. Or you can even redo it by pushing this and bring you back to what you originally had. Just honestly, you know, I've been running them for a while now and it just, it's hard to really compare them to the other units that's, that's out there right now. They're just, okay. it's, they're ahead, ahead of their, they're on their own lead, you know, so. One of the things we do is have edge swiping on this system. So if I swipe up, I can bring up my layers menu, swipe down, bring up a quick page to jump from different modes easily, or swipe out from the left and, and bring up my data boxes, or on the right hand side, I can bring up navigation functionality. And you can see here what how it works. Glad to hear that. that that's really nice to hear. Tim, uh, what was your take on it today? Well, and I think what Mike would have saw, you know, he, he led into it. You know, the interesting part is when you, you know, Mike has TZT2 on his boat currently, and we were comparing it to System A, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And System A is feature packed. It has a lot of features. I'm definitely not denying that. But, uh, you know, since Eric brought up the UI just in general, you know, one of the comparisons is UI. You know, the unit interface on TZT2, TZT3 is seamless, everything's easy to find, and everything is generally found under an edge swipe, so it's instantaneous gratification. That's what I'd call it. Like, uh, today we were out and we were looking to try to change between north up, which is how Captain Mike runs, so we were set the course up in System A and we were trying to change to north up. It is a four-step process. Wow. Where on the TZT2 and TZT3, it's instantaneous button push, it's right on the screen. And, you know, that's just what we found all day. We found all the features we wanted to find. It had everything we were looking for. The UI just feels dated, and everything is kind of buried into a multi-step process. And I know it's only four steps. That might seem trivial to a lot of people, but it's not trivial to somebody operating a boat because that's three more steps than Mike wants to take. And when I'm leaned over in this 3D mode, there's no limitations. Our competitors can't do hardly any navigation functions or add or change any navigation functions in this mode. But for the TC Touch 3 TD MFDs, 
I can easily add a waypoint. I can touch the machine, add a new point, navigate to it, say go to. You know, I can navigate, I can add routes, change routes, do all my functions exactly the same way I can in 2D. With our competitors, their 3D modes is a separate, you know, function. They have to go into that mode. They're very limited in what they can do. With TZ Touch 3, you just simply go and navigate the same way you would in 2D or instantly pop back into 2D mode and continue. Matt, how about you? You were on the same boat. Yeah, I'm, and I'm gonna have to agree with Tim, and you know, uh, it, it just goes back to boating safety and situational awareness. The more time your eyes are on the screen, the more time your eyes are off the water, not observing, you know, other vessels or other targets. Well, that's good. I mean, we know that System A is, is a quality product, and so is TZT3. It's just a matter of how you use it and the speed of using it, so that's a good point. Manny, how about you? You were on System B, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Which, what, what do you think of that as a, a chart uh, plotter? I do currently use System B on, on my other boat, and uh, I gotta say that the Furuno unit blew me away with the speed and responsive of when we did the figure eight. I mean, it couldn't get more glitchier uh, with the other one. Uh, okay, so, the, yeah. the, the, the Furuno TZT3 uh, was just flawless. The speed mm -hmm. of it, how he repainted, how he did everything. I mean, that really blew me away. I, I can't I can't be more jealous of my guys that <laughs> I, I don't have it on my boat yet. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to having it and having that same speed on my boat. Coming to Manny's boat soon. <laughs> 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 All right, Clayton, how about you? Dollar. <laughs> exactly. It's only dollars. You, you were on there with uh, Captain Manny. What yep. did you? What's your observation? Well, of? you know, I kind of I want to echo the same thing that you know the the groups from you know Matt and everybody else that you guys saw mm -hmm. on your systems that it was at least you know between two to four you know touch points to get where you needed to go, which is you know two or three more than you really should. Like you said, the more time your eyes are on the screen, the less they're on the water, yep. which is a huge deal. And you know, when you're out there in the chop and boats are flying at you and you're underway trying to lay points, that's a big deal. For example, right now, if I edge swipe up, I'll bring up my layers menu. And from here, you can see I can change charts. It's the upper left-hand selection, right? I can easily switch from a vector to a raster chart on the fly, instantly. I can go back to that raster, the back to that vector chart. But it's, it's all there, it's simple to use, you have a few extra touch commands, but it is slow. You know, it's the redraw time is slow, the time it takes you to plot in a waypoint. You know, we did learn some things because Manny has the system. So we figured out that you could move a waypoint. It's not as fast as it is on TZT because when you move it and you touch on the screen where you want it to go, it'll halt for 20 seconds before it'll move the waypoint and redraw the line. I mean, that's a lifetime when you're actually doing it. And when we did the figure eight thing, we actually got the screen to lag so bad that it would that locked up on us, did that weird screen glitchy thing at the top, and we actually had to unplug it, break the clamps loose, unplug it, kill power, and set it all back up to get it to come Jeez. back. Oh, wow. Twice. Reached. Captain Cam, you were on System C. What do you think of uh, the chart plotter on System C? It was actually pretty good. Um, the pace, as far as the speed test these guys are talking about, it kept up with the figure eight. Um, not a lot of lag on it at all compared to the TZT3. It was a pretty good unit. I mean, if you had to get out there and do it and, you know, get around, that unit would be great for you. But kind of like what these guys were talking about, it just seemed outdated. Um, kind of just seems like Furuno is on the leading edge of all this stuff and making a great new product that just is hard to kind of match up with after kind of seeing it hand in hand today. Knowing your boundary lines are very important because that could be the difference between getting a ticket or not getting a ticket. For example, Sombrero Key is a no take zone. So this would be a great area to set up your boundary lines. You can set alarms. So if I want to, I can set my alarm and automatically know as I approach the boundary when I'm getting too close. It's really important for commercial fishermen who are working with MLPAs or different areas where they know there's no take zones and if they break that boundary they're in trouble. So this is a great way to be safe and understand your location and how you are with respect to these boundaries. Okay. And Brayden, you were on the boat there with Captain Cam. What's your observation? Yeah, we were on System C and I think I've mentioned it before. I think System, you know, they did a good job with this user interface. 
um, it's clean, you know, it, it's going to do what you want, but uh, the way TZT3 utilizes the edge swipes to get to places so much quicker than System C can. One of the great things about the TZ Touch 3 user interface is just how few touches I need to interact with the machine in order to prepare or, or present the chart in the way I want to look at it. For example, with this edge swipe up feature, I go into my layers mode. If I want to turn on a satellite photo, it's one swipe up and one touch. Instantly, satellite photos appear. If I want to then turn satellite photos off or turn on depth shading, or for example, my radar overlay or rings or AIS contacts, it's still just a single keystroke. Compare that to our competitors where you have to go in into menus and search and go and look for different functionalities. Uh, one thing that really surprised me and blew me away about System C was I, if I wanted to search for a waypoint and then go to that waypoint, I counted it with Cam. It was a six step process. Wow. <laughs> to find a waypoint in my list and go to it. Wow. And then it would even become an eight step process if I were to close out that menu and then open up my chart. For TZT3, if I go to a uh, waypoint on my list, it automatically just goes away and opens up my chart. So, I mean, it's just little things like that that you know people can people can see, and they're going to appreciate when they see TZT3. Yeah, you know, I, I think what the conclusion here here is is that really all four manufacturers make a, a fine chart plotter, and uh, which is great because that's the main feature of the MFD units. So it's good to know that everybody has a, a solid chart plotter. It sounds like the user interface is really where we're making a difference in there. And with TZ Touch 3, we've really made strides to listen to our customers, hear the things that you wanted to have changed, and made those changes to make it even a better user interface than TZ Touch 2 was. So we're going to continue on that track. We're going to continue to make changes. We're going to continue to listen to our customers and make it the single best chart plotter on the market. Well, that completes our chart plotter shootout. And hopefully you found it as interesting as we did and now can make an informed decision on which chart plotter is best for you and your navigational needs. Coming up next is the radar shootout. And let me tell you, we put them through their paces. Using the solid state domes, we see how they handle short range and long range performance. We look at bird detection and a whole lot more. If radar performance is important to you, you're going to want to see these test results. So make sure you tune in and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the bell below to get notifications for the next time we release new videos. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.